Today, I'm looking at three mining and herbalism routes from the War Within to try and find out which is the best, which makes the most gold, and asking the question, is it even worth doing this anymore? I wanted to aim this towards the average player. I'm not really a farmer. I'm not particularly good at it, but I do enjoy doing it occasionally. This isn't going to be some super min-maxed farmer who has run these routes for dozens of hours, sort of min-maxed everything to the max, able to get 100k an hour, something crazy like that. Anyone watching this should be able to get fairly similar results to me, especially considering some of the mistakes I made as well. So the first thing I did is I'm not a druid on my mining herbalism character. That obviously makes a big difference sort of with the gathering and stuff like that. So, so yeah, that's the first thing. So if you're a druid on your gathering character, then you're going to have a slight advantage over me. The second thing is I'm not particularly using any add-ons here. So there's no gather mate, anything like that. I'm basically just roughly running the route and seeing how it comes out. So if you are using sort of the add-ons to min-max this a bit more, then that's going to give you a bit of an advantage over me as well. Thirdly, and this is the big one, I did this just after reset and I forgot to pick up the weaver's buff again before I went and sort of filmed all this. So I'm missing 30% gathering speed and, and that's huge. 30% gathering speed is absolutely huge. So I really do think that most people should be able to perhaps get more than I'm getting here. At this point, most people should have about the same knowledge points as me. Even if you haven't done any sort of shuffling, it's not particularly hard now to just do the enchanting catch-up shuffle and get a huge amount of art and security from that so that you can buy all your knowledge books if you are a little bit short on what I am. All the routes I'm talking about today have come from people sort of volunteering their routes on the KCHAC Discord community server. So if you want to join that, growing really, really fast, 1,800 members in just over a week, you can click that in the link in the description below. So the first route we're looking at today then is Hallowfall, and I'm running the red route. So this is the super short, super simple one in the far north, and you can't really go wrong with this route. The node density on this route is absolutely crazy. So it wasn't even that unusual to have five or six nodes on your minimap at once, which is just absolutely nuts. It was also suggested in the comment that this was actually a great place to do artisan security catch-up. Now, I've not actually tried it because I've not done an artisan security catch-up uh, recently, but I can imagine from the node density I've been seeing here that that would actually be a good idea. And, and the, the guy that sort of volunteered all this information sort of says three to four hours to cap everything out, which, which you know, is really, really good considering the amount of time it took me doing the, the crappy route I was running. There are some areas around here where the mobs are a little bit annoying. Some elites that knock you off, dismount you quite easily, etc. Less of an issue as you do it more. I just tended to avoid certain nodes once I knew that they were a bit awkward to get to. Now, this might have actually been a little bit less of an issue if I did have the weaver's buff, so I had that little bit faster gathering speed, so you can sort of swoop in, grab them, swoop out before you sort of get dismounted or anything like that. Now, generally speaking, this was a really easy, chilled out farm where you could just sort of completely switch off. And the route's so simple, it's just a simple, fairly small circle, and it just does what you need it to do, basically. Overall, an hour, I got more bismuth than the other ores, which is always a nice thing. Herbwise is split between Blessing Blossom, Arafa Spear, and Micro Bloom. These particular herbs are absolutely perfect for my herbalism build because these are the three herbs I actually have maxed out. So this was always going to be a, uh, a route that was going to work well for me. Also got four Null Stones, eight Null Lotuses, and loads of other stuff as you can see here as well. Now I didn't manage to get the 55 to 60,000 gold an hour that the person who suggested this route to me was managed to get, and that was on the EU as well. But I did manage to get just over 40k an hour, which considering it's the first time I've run this first hour, like I said, not particularly good farm, I'm not using add-ons, 40k gold an hour, that's, you know, fairly decent for what sort of a regular player can be getting from farming at this point in the expansion. So yeah, this one 
Really simple, really easy route, 40k an hour, can't argue with that. So secondly, I went to the Ringing Deeps, and this one was suggested by A1 Priest on the Discord server. This is much more of a traditional, longer gathering route, covering sort of pretty much the whole outer edge of the Ringing Deep zone. Once again, this route, loads of nodes along sort of pretty much the whole part of the room. Now this area I did find a lot more competitive than the other routes that I tried on this video. Now I was farm on a low population server and I just found that there was quite a lot of competition in this zone and at times that's just a little bit annoying. You know when you get to the nodes, they disappeared, all that sort of stuff. Just that was happening a lot more in this zone than in the others. Another issue I had in this zone was it is so much more laggy than the other zones in the war within. I even got a couple of disconnects just in the one hour while I was filming this and, and the occasional lag spike as well. Don't get that in any other zone, just in this one zone. As for results, from a mining perspective, more bismuth than the other rows, four null stones, huge variety of herbs here, getting sort of every single herb from running this route. Some of them I'm not maxed out on, like on the lure drop, I'm not quite maxed out on that. So I would actually be getting slightly higher gold per hour if I did have that maxed out because I would have been getting some higher quality lure drop from doing this. So overall then I got 36.5k gold an hour. Potentially this could definitely be more if I had the herbs more maxed out and also that the environment wasn't so competitive. So do think that this could probably get higher than the 40k per hour that we got on the first build if those two things weren't so much of an issue. But I did find this out of all of the routes, this one was just the most annoying to run, even if it does potentially have the highest potential gold per hour if, if things are going in your favor. The final route that I want to try out was actually the one I was most looking forward to giving a go, and we are heading to Ashkhet. This one was suggested by RM Vendelin, once again from the discord i was interested in this one because of the fact of how it was presented so we have no annoying dynamite nodes in ashka at all which is a massive bonus to begin with secondly iron claw only comes from camouflage nodes so if you don't have the file of true sight then you will only ever get bismuth and acarite and if you have both of these maxed out in mining which i do with my spec then everything you mine has a chance to give you a null stone, which is, you know, very nice. This means you're not actually on this route going to run the Vial of True Sight. You're going to run the Vial of Bountiful Seasons, which is one of the, see, this is one of the things that interested me about this because it was just doing things slightly different. So instead of having those extra nodes, you can have that extra finesse and you're not going to get any Iron Claw at all from this. Now, original poster didn't give a route, so I just went on a basic cover most of the edge of the zone and it seemed to work well enough just doing that. So this was another farm that was super chilled out and in addition to that there was barely any competition anywhere on this room. Now the only issue I had slightly with this and it may just have been because I needed to get used to the route a bit more is there was a lot more issues with how vertical this zone is compared to some of the others. Um, but once you get used to that, I imagine that's not such an issue. It's just sometimes finding some of those nodes is a bit of a pain. Now, the mining results from this particular zone after an hour were pretty insane. Decent amount of bismuth and acarite, but most importantly, I got 12 null stones in just an hour of farming. I imagine that this was an absolutely insane farm when null stone prices were pretty high. Herb-wise, a bit of a mixture of orbinid, lure drop, mica bloom. Once again, I could have got more gold from this if my lure drop and orbinid was more leveled up. I was never going to do particularly well on the herbing on this zone because out of the three herbs that do drop, two of them I don't have fully leveled up. So the lure drop and the orbinid I don't have fully leveled up. So it's not particularly a fantastic comparison. But overall, like I said, this was a really chilled out, easy farm for an hour. And I got sort of just over 37,000 gold from it, and that was with even at having those herbs sort of fully leveled up. In addition to doing this as a mining and herbalism route, you could actually just run it as a mining route as well. That was, I think, sort of what the original poster was suggesting when they sort of said what they said. 
I wanted to try out some mining herbalism, see how it went from there. And it seemed to do fairly well. Like I said, I really enjoyed this one. Having no dynamite nodes is really, really nice. Having sort of no competition, no nodes disappearing and stuff all the time, that's really, really nice as well. Like I said, really simple, really easy room. Overall then, all the routes I think got a fairly similar goal per hour. The Halo 4 one was slightly higher, but did have that advantage of all the herbs I was collecting on that route that I did was fully specialised in, which the other two routes didn't. So you can still get a decent amount of gold from mining and herbing. Like I said, if I can get this, then I'm sure you guys can do the same, especially if you've just min-maxed it that little bit more than I have and just make sure you pick up that weaver's bus because that was a really stupid mistake when I did all this filming. Now, of course, the prices on the EU will be slightly lower than this, but unfortunately, that's just, just how it goes with the difference between the EU and the US auction house. But like I said, the guy who originally put the first one up said he was getting sort of over 50k gold an hour on the EU. So if you really do min-max this, uh, then you can make some proper good gold out of it. Now, if you have any other gathering farms you want me to check out because I do enjoy doing this, then please let me know either in the comment section below or on the Discord. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.